August 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job, chapters 15 through 17 of the Old Testament. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, Does a wise man answer with blustery knowledge or fill his belly with the east wind? Does he argue with useless talk with words that have no value in them? But you even break off piety and hinder meditation before God. Your sin inspires your mouth. You choose the language of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not I. Your own lips testify against you. Were you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen in on God's secret counsel? Do you limit wisdom to yourself? What do you know that we don't know? What do you understand that we don't understand? The gray-haired and the aged are on our side, men far older than your father. Are God's constellations too trivial for you, or a word spoken in gentleness to you? Why has your heart carried you away? And why do your eyes flash when you turn your rage against God and allow such words to escape from your mouth? What is man that he should be pure, or one born of woman that he should be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, if even the heavens are not pure in his eyes, how much less man who is abominable and corrupt, who drinks in evil like water. I will explain to you, listen to me, and what I have seen I will declare. What wise men declare, hiding nothing from the tradition of their ancestors, to whom alone the land was given when no foreigner passed among them. All his days the wicked man suffers torment throughout the number of the years, they are stored up for the tyrant. Terrifying sounds fill his ears. In a time of peace, marauders attack him. He does not expect to escape from darkness. He is marked for the sword. He wanders about food for vultures. He knows that the day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish terrify him. They prevail against him like a king ready to launch an attack. For he stretches out his hand against God and vaunts himself against the Almighty defiantly charging against him with a thick, strong shield, because he covered his face with fat and made his hips bulge with fat. He lived in ruined towns and in houses where no one lives, where they are ready to crumble into heaps. He will not grow rich, and his wealth will not endure, nor will his possessions spread over the land. He will not escape the darkness. A flame will wither his shoots, and he will depart by the breath of God's mouth. Let him not trust in what is worthless, deceiving himself, for worthlessness will be his reward. Before his time he will be paid in full, and his branches will not flourish. Like a vine he will let his sour grapes fall, and like an olive tree he will shed his blossoms. For the company of the godless is barren, and fire consumes the tents of those who accept bribes. They conceive trouble and bring forth evil. Their belly prepares deception. Then Job replied, I have heard many things like these before. What a miserable comforters are you all. Will there be an end to your windy words or what provokes you that you answer? I also could speak like you if you were in my place. I could pile up words against you and I could shake my head at you. But I would strengthen you with my words. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. But if I speak, my pain is not relieved. And if I refrain from speaking, how much of it goes away? Surely now he has worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. You have seized me and it has become a witness. My leanness has risen up against me and testifies against me. His anger has torn me and persecuted me. He has gnashed at me with his teeth. My adversary locks his eyes on me. People have opened their mouths against me. They have struck my cheek in scorn. They unite together against me. God abandons me to evil men and throws me into the hands of wicked men. I was in peace and he has shattered me. He has seized me by the neck and crushed me. He has made me his target. His archers surround me. Without pity, he pierces my kidneys and pours out my gall on the ground. He breaks through against me time and time again. He rushes against me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth on my skin and buried my horn in the dust. My face is reddened because of weeping, and on my eyelids there is a deep darkness. Although there is no violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure. O earth, do not cover my blood, nor let there be a secret place for my cry. 
Even now my witness is in heaven, my advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend, as my eyes pour out tears to God, and he contends with God on behalf of man, as a man pleads for his friend. For the years that lie ahead are few, and then I will go on the way of no return. My spirit is broken, my days have faded out, the grave awaits me. Surely mockery is with me, my eyes must dwell on their hostility. Make then my pledge with you, who else will put up security for me? Because you have closed their minds to understanding, therefore you will not exalt them. If a man denounces his friends for personal gain, the eyes of his children will fail. He has made me a byword to people. I am the one in whose face they spit. My eyes have grown dim with grief. My whole frame is but a shadow. Upright men are appalled at this. The innocent man is troubled with the godless. But the righteous man holds to his way and the one with clean hands grows stronger. But turn, all of you, and come now. I will not find a wise man among you. My days have passed, my plans are shattered, even the desires of my heart. These men change night into day, they say, the light is near in the face of darkness. If I hope for the grave to be my home, if I spread out my bed in darkness, if I cry to corruption, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother or my sister, where then is my hope, and my hope who sees it? Will it go down to the barred gates of death? Will we descend together into the dust? God, even though Job and his friends don't have it quite right yet, <laughs> what's, what's actually going on? Um, something Job says just really sticks out to me in... Um, chapter 17 verse 13 he says if I hope for the grave to be my home if I spread out my bed in darkness if I cry to corruption you are my father and to the worm my mother or my sister where then is my hope and my hope who sees it and I think this is huge for any of us who are going through darkness which is everyone listening to this video right now at any given time we can be put into darkness we can go through those valleys of the shadow of death and we can feel all, a lot of this pain that Job's going through, although he had way more situations going on than most of us will ever have to deal with. But what he says is really important that if, if I agree with you, my non-comforting friends, if I agree with you and I say I'm guilty, and, and then how am I reflecting God in that? I'm, I'm literally taking away the God who is just, and I'm putting him in place of somebody who is not just. Job is saying he has faith that you're going to vindicate him. And his friends are saying, no, no, no. Just admit that you're guilty. Just give up your faith in God and admit you're guilty. And I think this is, this is huge. Because even though we don't like to be in, in this uncomfortable place, this painful place, this place where we sometimes feel like there's there's just no way out and we know your promises and, and we eventually see them but sometimes we just get so caught up in that darkness that we can't see a way out that if we were to give in to the world or give in to what somebody else is saying we would be given giving up any hope and that's what job is saying here if you're telling me to to just repent on something that's false you're asking me to give up my hope in who i know god is if I'm going through a dark time in my life and I'm not praying to you, God, and I'm not in your word, and I'm not trying to find that way out so that you're glorified in all of that, not, not to make my heart feel better, although that helps, but so that you're glorified in all of that, then where is my hope? Where is my witness? If I give all that up and I choose the worldly path, which is basically what his friends are asking him to do, there's nothing that allows your glory to shine in that. Job also talks about uh, his life ending soon. Well, he knows at that time, if he goes to his death, two things happen. One, he may not be vindicated. <laughs> he may not have you make things right. Back then, it must have been so incredibly difficult without 
Jesus Christ as our intercessor. But part two of that too is when we go through these hard times, when we go through something icy as a weakness in us, that's your biggest testimony, God. That's your biggest area where you are glorified. That's the biggest area where people can really see God in our lives. I try and be transparent as much as possible about my life without going overboard. Um, and I try and be transparent in social media. Not because I like telling people about my business, because I actually don't. I'm a very introverted person. I'm a very uh, personal person. I don't like people to know about me. However, I have learned that if I'm transparent in what I'm going through and visible online, other people respond to that, not because of me, but because they see that hope I have in you. They see you change my heart and change my life and bring good things the really good things into my life not the things I want but the things that actually make my life amazing and reflect you I think my testimony of hope in those dark times is way more powerful than if I'm just all happy go lucky pink colored glasses which is who I really am but if all I'm doing is doing that and posting Bible verses and talking about things there's not really anything for people to grab hold of they see my joy and they're like, okay, Janelle's a, a happy person. But it's when I'm going through those deep areas that my true testimony comes out. Because my true testimony is always going to reflect you, God. My true testimony is never going to be about me. And I know when I make things about me, it has nothing to do with you. And that's not good. And amazingly, Job knew that. Job knew if he made this all about him, if it was all about him feeling better, if it was all about just admitting to his friends so that they would shut up, he knew that he would lose any opportunity of glorifying you. That you are the sovereign God of everything. You are the just God. That you will make this right. And when you make this right, boy, you'll show his friends. That becomes his testimony. Same thing in my world. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I went through one of the hardest times of my life. <sighs> Wasn't sure I was going to make out make any headway out of that. Um, but slowly and surely, every moment and every day, things changed in my life as I turned things over to you and, and became very transparent online. And people saw that transformation that you made in my life. And then making sure that everybody knew it was all about you. Um, obviously was the most important part. So Job gets that even in our darkest hour and truly that was Job's darkest hour to realize that in that particular situation we can't give up our hope, we can't buy into the world, we can't give into sin or give into idols. That those are the moments when our faith is going to glorify you the most God. It's when our testimony is going to become the biggest is from the things that, as we call it, that go wrong in our world. You have promised to make them good. And you do in our testimony. God, thank you so much for the dark areas of our life. For the times like right now where things are confusing and things are frustrating and things are really painful. And there's lots of tears. I thank you during those times because I know that good will come out of it. Not necessarily my version of good, just like not necessarily Job's friend's version of good, but I know your good will come out of it. I know part of my testimony will come out of it. I know other people will see facets of you from that testimony during that dark time. And that's what makes me praise you during the hard times, during the storms during the dark periods. And I know I don't always get this right, God. I know more often than not, I don't. I'm more like Job's friends. <laughs> and for that, I'm truly sorry. But I thank you for opportunities like right now where I can work on getting it right again in this dark time. God, I praise you during the good times and I'm learning to praise you during the storms. Thank you for that. In your son's name I pray, amen.